In this lesson, we're going to talk about factoring. And factoring is basically kind of a reverse distributive property. We're starting with an expression that has a that has several terms in it and what we're looking for is we're looking for things in common that we can pull out of those particular uh, expressions. The reason why we do all of this is we're uh, factoring is actually a very helpful process to help simplify large expressions that have multiple terms and it's also very helpful for solving quadratic equations uh, in, in, a, in a different way. And we'll be looking at that later in this unit and later in this chapter. For now though, let's start just by looking at kind of some simple expressions and get some practice in looking for the greatest common factor of different expressions and then rewriting an expression so it looks the same, just in a different way. In example number one, we have 16x and 20. And what we're doing is we're looking for values that will go in evenly into every part of this expression. So if I look at 16 and 20, I notice that 4 would divide in evenly into both of those expressions, and so I can pull a 4 outside of parentheses. So again, kind of a reverse distributive property. Once you um, come up with a common factor that you would write outside of the parentheses, what you need to come up with is what's left inside. Um, so for example, to get from 4 to 16x, I'd need another 4x to do that. So 4 times 4x is 16x to get that to work. Then I need to pull the 4 out of 20. 4 goes into 25 times, and notice if we do 4 times 5, we get a positive 20 there. So here what we have is we have a factored form. We've taken it from a set of terms to a multiplication problem where we have 4 times by something else. So that's what we're looking to do in each of these problems. In problem number two, notice that uh, here we have a negative 4n cubed and a minus n. In these particular examples, we uh, each of these expressions has an n in them, so we can pull them out. We also usually like our leading term, so that the leading term is what we call the first number in our, in our expression. We like our leading term to be positive. So even though I could just pull out an n, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to pull out a negative n. The reason is, is it's going to, after we pull that out, it's going to make the leading term inside the parentheses be positive. That will be very, very helpful in some of the future examples that we're going to do in, in terms of simplifying. So it's a good best practice to get into. In this case, this has a 4 and this doesn't have a number in it, so there's no number that we can pull out, but we can pull out an, uh, an end. So then we need to recreate what's going to be left behind in the parentheses. Negative n times what will give me negative 4n squared. Well, I already have the negative taken care of. I do need a 4. I have 1n, but I need n to the third, so I need two more n's. So I could write that as 4n squared. And again, negative n times 4n squared will give me negative 4n to the third. Then I have to think negative n times what will give me negative n? Well, I mean, it already is what we want. So what could we multiply by to make that work? We still, what we can do here is n goes into n one time, and we pulled the negative out, so we're going to write that as plus 1. It's real important at this point. This is why I kind of recommended that multiply things out just to make sure. We're not trying to change the problem at all. What we're trying to do is just rewrite this expression in an equivalent way. So if we multiply this out, we should get the original problem back out again. So negative n times 4n squared will give me negative 4n to the third. Negative n times a positive 1 will give me a minus n, and that's where this second piece comes from. If you forget to do the plus 1, you wouldn't get back to where you started in the beginning, and that's a really important piece of factoring is again, we're just rewriting the problem in a different way. Here we're writing it as negative n times 4n squared plus 1. And that's what that factor word means, is that we're looking for things that would multiply rather than just things that add or subtract together. In this next example here, notice here we have 5y to the 7th minus y to the 3rd. This has a 5. This has no term in front of it, so no number would get pulled out. They both do, in fact, also have y's, so we can pull a y out. More than that, though, notice that this has y times y times y seven times. This has three y's being multiplied. So if we're looking for the biggest common factor, we could actually get a y cubed out of both of those expressions. So that would be our better, our better value. Here, what we would have to do then is I've got y cubed. What, do I, what am I missing to get up to y to the seventh? I, five y to the seventh, I need the five. And I need four more y's, so that'll be five y to the fourth. 
The y cubed is exactly what I need. It's a minus, and then I would need to multiply by one in order to recreate that original expression. And again, do yourself a sanity check. Y cubed times five y to the fourth is five y to the seventh. Y cubed minus times a minus one will get me that negative y cubed. So this would be my uh, factored expression where I pull out the greatest common factor. Um, so we can have numbers, we can have letters, we can have a combination of numbers or letters, and that's what happens in our last problem here. Notice from the number point of view, we have an 8, a 6, and a 10. 2 goes into all of those values, so we can pull a 2 out. My first term is positive, so I'm not going to worry about pulling a negative out this time. Um, uh, I did get the 2 out of the numbers. Now let's look at the variables. All of these have an x in it, so we're going to pull out an x. Um, this has an x to the third, an x squared, and an x, so they all have at least x in it. With y's, they all have a y. This has a y to the third, this has a y to the second, and this has a plain y, so they all have at least y in it. So that's what's going to get pulled out from my expression. Now when I pull this out, notice that there were three terms here, so I'm going to need three terms inside my parentheses to make this work. So let's see what we're missing. To get from 2xy to 8xy to the third, we need 2 times 4 to get to the 8. I already have the x that I need. I have one y, but I need y to the third, so I need two more y's. So I'll have 4y squared for that first piece. For the next one, I need to get from negative 2 to negative 6, so I'll have to times by a minus 3. I have one of the x's that I need, but I need another one. I have one of the y's that I need, but I need another one. When I get to the last one, I have to think of what will two, um, what can I get that will multiply 2xy and get 10x to the third y as a result. 2 times positive 5 will get me the 10. I have 1x, but I need 2 more, and I have the y that I need already. So this is going to be my final expression when I'm done. Again, highly recommend go ahead and distribute that out. Look at each of those three multiplications and make sure you get the original expression back again. Here, 2xy times 4y squared, I get 8xy to the third. 2xy times minus 3xy, I get negative 6x squared and y, and then which and y squared because of the y times y. And for the last part, I have 2. I need that uh, plus 5 to get a plus 10 there. x, I need two more x's, so I'm the x squared, and then the y is exactly what I need. Um, and I end up with 10x cubed y, which is what I had in my original problem.